You know, this whole video is just going to be a video about me freaking out about fictional anime boys that I can't have in real life. I don't need any more husbandos, but here we are! Hey guys, so today we are doing a another anime review because I just finished season two and I had I had to talk about it. I wasn't gonna do a video but then one of my favorite people that I love to watch on YouTube, Ordinary Dreamer, Nadia, and she did a review for Haiku and you know what? I loved it. I wanted to do a review for Haiku and I was like, you know what? We're gonna do it. Screw it if no one watches it. As of this recording, I have not seen season three and season four I believe is still going on. The manga just finished. Yeah, so I'm a little behind, but you know what? I watched it maybe a year now. A lot of people who were like, oh, you love My Hero Academia, you will really like Haiku. And I've heard about it from a lot of people. And I was like, what is this volleyball anime that everyone is talking about? And I was like, I'm gonna do it. So back in May, I started and finished season one and I loved it. And I don't know why it took me till like July to watch season two when it was literally right there on Netflix. I finally finished season two. So yeah, we're gonna talk about seasons one and two of Haiku because I took notes. <laughs> I actually took notes after I went back and rewatched some episodes from season one and season two, which I was totally fine with, so I could have good notes. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just general feels of the show. Off the bat, I am not a sports lover. I sucked at sports in high school and in gym class um, because I was made fun of a lot because I was not coordinated with the ball. I was afraid the ball was gonna hit me in the fucking face. And so the fact that in Haiku, the sportsmanship in Haiku makes me wish that was the type of sportsmanship I had when I was in gym class in high school. Everyone is so nice to everyone and they're like, come on, you got this. Next time you'll get it. You got this. Just shake it off. If Nishinoya or Daichi would be like, Come on, Emily, you got this. Next time, I'd be like, I will try my hardest because I don't want to upset you boys. Just the passion and the excitement that the Karasuno boys and all the other teams get from playing volleyball it makes me want to try playing volleyball. My sister played volleyball when she was in middle school. So like, I know a little bit about volleyball here and there. They all want to get better. Like, they all know that they're really good players. Like, Hinata, he had to learn and get better techniques and work harder. But the fact that all of them are so willing to try harder, to take tips from other team members or other teams and be like, oh, we can try that. The fact that they are so willing to work harder, get better at their skills, and try out new techniques and try out new things is so encouraging because that's the only way you can get better in life. The fact that they are willing to build up their skills all the time shows how much they love and care about this sport. Well, especially in season two where they have all of those practice dismatches with Bokuto's team and with Nekuma, Kiro, they learn to work on their skills from having all those practice matches and all these, these camps they go to, they get to learn all of these new skills and see other teams play and be like, oh yeah, we can be that good. We should try that out. They don't build each other down. They build each other up. Bokuto and Kiro are so willing to show Karasuno more things and they see that Karasuno has the potential. And Karasuno's not like, oh, these guys are better than us. We should give up. They're like, no, I'm going to challenge these people. I'm going to build up my skills so that I can take them on. Like, they don't get super jealous either. Like, I understand that they're like, Abba Josai and Nakuma are so good. But that just makes them want to try harder and get better, which is what it should do. You shouldn't feel discouraged and feel like, oh, God, we suck. No, Karasuno's like, oh, they're so good. We gotta get better so that we can beat them or we gotta get up to their level. Like They're not discouraged. They wanna keep on fighting and keep on growing their skills and that's something that you need to do. And I just, I love that when other teams encourage other teams, like, especially Nakuma when they actually go and have those practice games with them in season two. They're enemies because, you know, they're going up against each other, they're rivals, but they still want to build up each other because what's the point of bringing another team down? You want to build each other up so that you can be both the best teams that you can be. And it's like, yes, we're here for that encouragement. So now I want to talk about the characters. It just goes in the order of which characters I want to talk about first. The first one I want to talk about is our baby cinnamon roll, our baby boy, Mr. Hinata. Oh, I love him. The amount of growth and skill levels that Hinata goes through is in season one and then even in season two is insane. He starts off just be knowing how to hit the ball and jump really high. He doesn't really know anything else. So when he gets and applies to Karasuno, he has to really hone on his skills and learn to really work with his team and not just be good at being the secret jumping weapon. He needs to learn how to do other things. His passion for volleyball is so contagious. He is so short 
but he is so like I don't care that I'm short I'm gonna I'm gonna cream all these people on the court I'm gonna beat them because I love this game me my height is not gonna stop me from becoming so good and I love that something like his height especially in volleyball could be considered a weakness but he doesn't let that happen he works on his skill sets he works on his jumps a lot harder so that not only can he be a secret weapon but also he can be the best player so he can be the best ace in the future that he wants to be his excitement his passion for volleyball but also to work so hard is so contagious and i love his enthusiasm i love that he gets excited over like any of his teammates doing a cool new move he's like oh what's that what's that and even in season two when he learns to really practice new sets with Kagayama and really he learns so Kagayama tries to set the ball and so that Hinata can hit it from a lower point, a higher point, a midpoint. The fact that those two really got together in season two and really learned how to hone that skill so they could do different types of jumps and sets is just so impressive. I love that. So cool to see their progression just on working on that small set and move alone was awesome. Now we gotta talk about Kagayama. He was so frustrating the first time I met him. I think the problem is because he has such a hard time communicating properly to his team. He has a set, a game plan, a whole goal in mind of how to execute this next play. But he doesn't talk to his team in the way that he should. He doesn't really talk very nice to them. He just kind of shouts at them. He doesn't really encourage them. If they mess up, he screams at them. If they do something good, he doesn't really like or say nice job or better not next time. He doesn't really do that. In the beginning when they're in middle school, his team just stops playing with him in the middle of the game because they're like, he's a dick. He's not being nice. Why the hell are we going to back him up? Your teammates are not going to listen to if you're a total douche and you don't know how to communicate yourself. And that's something that Sugawara really teaches him when he gets to Kurasuno. Sugawara, who is the team's like setter, he really teaches Kagayama to tell Hinata what he needs. To ask Hinata, what kind of spike or what kind of set do you need? Or how should I do this better so that you can, how can I be my best so you can achieve your best in the middle of a game? Sugawara really teaches him to open up his mind and to really communicate his ideas and his game plans better. And you can see that even season two when they are trying to go up against Abajosa and other teams, he will ask Hinata, this is what I want to do, or he'll tell Sugawara, this is what I want to do. Like, he'll tell it in a more concisive way. His character development, not just in communicating what he wants with his team is great, but also his communication with Hinata. When they had that big fight in season two, and they're like, ar, 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 and Kageyama's like, we're not going to do that. Hinata's like, I want to do that. I think they really needed that time to just take a step back, not talk to each other and really focus and hone on their own skills so that when they did come together and work together they could be the best duo together. Kageyama needs to work on his sets so not only can he be better for himself but also he can be better for Hinata and Hinata needs to work on his spikes and his jumps so that not only can he be better for himself but he can also be better for Kageyama. So I really like that they took a step back and were like we need to focus on our skills individually so that together we can become one. Next up we have my bae Nishinoya. He's my favorite if you couldn't tell. I love Nishinoya. He ah uh, used my bae for season one. Season two was a combination of Nishinoya and Bokuto because Bokuto has my heart as well because he's like he's great. We stand a frosted hair boy. I would love to hang out with Nishinoya and just like pull pranks with him. I would just love to hang out with Nishinoya in general. I think he seems like a really fun guy. The fact that he encourages everyone like he, every time he Hinata's up to spike or up to play. He always encourages Hinata. He always encourages his other teammates. He's always encouraging Asuhi. He was really kind of the one of the people who pushed Asuhi to come back to volleyball. He's like, Asuhi, you are a good ace. We need you back. And he kind of, kind of was really hard on Asuhi in the beginning, but it's just because he loves him and he cares about him and he's like, you're my friend. He's always encouraging his teammates, which I love that about Nishinoya. He's so great in the fact that he does that. The fact that he's always protecting Kyoko with um, Tanaka is so sweet. They went from being the, oh my god, I love her and date her, to being the overprotective father. <laughs> I don't know why, that's just so funny. I love Nishinoya. He's like, Tanaka! Oh my god, Tanaka's great. Most people just see him as a hothead. Oh no, he is a very clever boy. And here is why. So when they're going up against Abba Josai, Abba Josai has that other player, Mad Dog, who is just like bad shit insane. When they're playing him in the last match, Tsukushima is picking up 
on the way of Mad Dog's patterns and the way he does things and Tanaka also picks up on it and he purposely tries to piss off Mad Dog so Mad Dog will get distracted and pick up his play so that Tanaka can get a couple points in for the team which is so clever so sneaky so genius the fact that Tanaka this hothead that we all think he is picks up on Mad Dog's pattern like bitch I'm gonna shut you down and get you distracted so you mess up and cross and you'll get some points I love that about Tanaka. He is a hothead and he is kind of dumb in certain situations. But when he needs to get his head in the game and be clever and pick up on things, you know that he will. And I love that about Tanaka. Next person we're going to talk about is Daichi, the team captain, the ultimate dad. He is so dad mode. He's always building up his teammates. But he's also scolding them, like he's always scolding. It's usually Hinata and Kageyama for either getting in a fight or an argument, which is not true dad fashion, but he's always building up his team. Well, okay, I flipped my shit when he got injured in season two. I was like, you can't do this to Daichi! No, Daichi, no! Da everyone says it's Daichi dying, and I'm like, you know, we'll call it that. Tanaka ran into him, but they were both gonna go get the ball, and it's not Tanaka's fault. Tanaka blamed himself, I'm like, Tanaka, it's not your fault, stop it! But then Inosha took him in, and he did a fabulous job, and we'll get to Inosha, because I got some feels on him. Daichi, oh my god, I love Daichi so much as well. I, just love, I love all the boys, I love all the boys. There's one boy that I can't stand, and I will talk about him. I do not like him, and I know people are gonna get triggered by me saying, you don't like him? How could you not like him? Next up, we got Sugawara. He's so sweet. I love him. He is the setter for Karasuno you know, before Kageyama gets here. And the fact that he is not bitter that Kageyama is technically kind of the new setter because Kageyama is better than Sugawara. And he's not upset or bitter about it. He's like, I understand that Kageyama is better. But at the same time, it's like, he's also a third year. So he really should, he should really be able to play more of the game because it's his last year. I really like the fact that they bring in Sugawara as kind of like a last minute um, defense in games. He's kind of like their kill switch. He comes in at last minute when they're like maybe down on their luck or they need to score an extra couple points to keep the game matched. And Sugawara comes in as like a secret weapon and they use him and he does his job and he kills it. They will keep the other teams interesting because they will get into their head. They will get into Kageyama's pattern. And they'll be like, okay, this is his set, look out for it. But then if they, take him out and put in Sugawara, it kind of throws the other team for a loop and Sugawara just kills it and he's so wise and interesting and I just love the fact that he teaches Kageyama things and Kageyama teaches him things. It's just, it's wonderful to see all of these boys like get together and talk and actually figure out things. Next up we have Man Bun himself, Asuhi! But Asuhi left because he didn't think he was good enough for the team because he couldn't see over that wall. The same wall that Hinata struggles to see over. Especially for Hinata because he's a smaller player. So he struggles to see over that wall, that block wall. And so Asuhi gets blocked, he keeps getting blocked and he just gets so frustrated. He's like, what's the point if I can't see over the wall? What's the point of playing volleyball? I can't see over the wall so I'm just done, I quit. If Hinata can do it, you can do it! So that's what Hinata wants to be. Hinata wants to be the ace. And so he's kind of trying to take Asuhi's spot and Asuhi's like, mm -mm, I'm not going to go down without a fight. Hinata has that skill because he can jump really high and spike really well, but Asuhi is also this really good teammate. He's not going to give up being the ace without a fight. He's willing to teach Hinata, watch Hinata grow and encourage him, but at the same time he's like, I'm not giving my spot up without a fight. It's like, you shouldn't because you're a great player. I think he gets inspired by Hinata. He sees for such a short guy, he can jump really high and get the balls over. And I think he kind of gets his mojo and his groove back a little bit. And I appreciate that. I love that these younger generations can inspire the older generations. Now we got Tadashi. The sub, he goes by a different name. But I watched the dubbed, so I'm gonna call him Tadashi. What a boy! What a boy Tadashi is! He's such a cinnamon roll. When he's called out to do a pinch serve, and he is just shaking and nervous and quaking, which I can understand, like, you've never really been put in the game before, and here you are having to do a pinch serve, like, it is nerve-wracking AF. But not just are your team's eyes on you, the other team's watching you, your coach is watching you, all of the other people in the stands are watching you, it is nerve-wracking. He misses it, and it's so frustrating because I know he wants to get so good at this game and he wants to try so hard, but then he gets helped and he works his ass off 
to be able to get to a point where he can score points for his team. And man, does it show in season two. Oh my god. In season two, when they need to get ahead, Tadashi begs the coach. And like, he's all, he's pretty much crying. He's like, put me in coach. I can score some points. I know I can do it. And the coach is like, just hold on Tadashi. We'll use you. Don't worry. We're going to give you another chance. And he does his job. He does that jump float serve and he kills it. And it's just so good to see him come back and get a redemption. I love it when characters get a redemption arc or they get to finally have that moment to show everyone what they've got and shine. And man oh man, does Tadashi shine. And it is so wonderful. We love your girl Tadashi. We love you so much. Next character I'm gonna talk about is one, he's not my favorite character, but it wasn't until season two where I was like really like, oh no, I do love you now. And that is Tsukashima. He was frustrating for a while, but I've now like him. He gets his own character arc in season two because he love he plays middle school, elementary school volleyball, and his brother is on this team. On this team, his brother isn't really. His brother's lying to him. Tsukashima always like brags about his brother, and like he's like my brother is so great. He's on a volleyball team. Finally, he goes to see one of his brother's games, and his brother is just standing there as like a cheerleader almost, and he is just distraught because he thinks his brother is this great player who. He's actually playing games and he's actually just in the sideline just gets so upset and he's just like what's the point of volleyball anymore he's just like what's the point point?" and it's not until Bokuto really tells him because he asked Bokuto and Kiro what's why do you guys like this sport so much what's the point of it and it's not really until Bokuto and Kiro show him I'll tell him about that one moment you will have that one moment that outshines all the other moments when you realize that oh my god I really love the sport. I love volleyball. That one moment will change your perspective for the rest of your life. I believe he has that moment. Because he has that moment when he blocks one of Ushiwaka. He blocks one of Ushiwaka's balls and he has that moment. And we're so proud of him for having that moment. It's that one moment where he blocks Ushiwaka's ball and he's like, I love volleyball now. Now, Inoshita, Inoshina, I, I, he, I don't know who he was in season one. I don't even know he existed in season one. <laughs> just bad but he's a character that we didn't know in season one but he got to shine in a short time in season two and man does he really shine so after Daichi's injured Inoshino has to become like take over and be the new captain and he just keeps thinking oh I'm not gonna be any good because I'm not like Daichi you don't have to be Daichi Daichi's an amazing coach yes but you have your own set of skills why do you think you would take over for Daichi. Don't you think Sugawara or someone else would take over Daichi if they didn't think you could do it? Because we see in flashbacks that he didn't, that he left the club. He didn't really love doing it anymore. He left the club and he felt bad. And when he did come back, he was like, Nishinoya and other people were like, well, Daichi leaves, you would be a great next team captain. And he's like, I don't deserve to be the team captain because I left. You don't understand. You left, but you came back. And that shows that you love this sport so much that you can't go forever without it. Just because you left does not mean you're not a good player. You are a great player. He, he kills it being a good team player. He scores them some points and he learns that he doesn't need to be Daichi. He can, he has his own set of skills, his own things that make him a key player. Well, he will make a great captain for when Daichi can no longer be captain. We support you. We are here for you. I believe it's Takeda. He's the guy with the black hair and glasses. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I, I think he's, he's a tiny giant. You may know nothing about volleyball, but how many times have people been like, oh, I don't know anything about it and be like, oh, just kidding. I think you're the tiny giant. I'm I see it. I really like in season two that we got to meet and really see more of the other teams. Like we got to meet Nekuma in season one, and then in season two we get to see a lot more Bokuto, who, oh, I still love Bokuto so much, and Kiro, who is just like a wonderful boy. We also get a little bit more of Kenma. I like that we get to see more of these other teams because they are just as important as Karasuno because they all love volleyball so much. They all want to be the best. They're all trying to make it and get better. I don't hate Kiro and Kenma or Bogoto because they're rivals of Karasuno. I love them because they're great boys. Like, they're great. I love Bogoto. He's so energetic. He can be kind of full of himself at times, but in a good way. But I love Bogoto. He's over the top, and I just love that about him. He's one of those friends that would be ride or die with you. If you committed a crime, there is no way in hell that Bogoto's not taking that ride with you. He would go with you to the ends of the earth, I feel like. He just seems like that type of friend, and I love him for that. 
we're gonna talk about Okaya. I don't like him. He is so frustrating AF. He does have a little arc, I will admit that, but I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't care. I am glad that he understands that Kageyama and Hinata are forces to be reckoned with and that he should not underestimate them, because he shouldn't, because they're badasses. Kurasuno should not be underestimated. So Awa Josai is a very competitive team and a very good rival to Kurasuno because Okaya and all of them might mess up here and there, but he's very good at encouraging his team and bringing out the best in them. We can see that. He's always encouraging other teammates, especially with Mad Dog. Like, he may mess up himself, and he may get, like, picked on by his other teammates. He has that coming. But at the same time, he knows how to rival up his team and get them really good. Karasuno does lose to Abba Josai in Season 1, which is so frustrating. But the fact that they were able to hold their own against Abba Josai for so long shows you that Karasuno is growing. They can do good things. They went up against Daytech and really managed to hold their own as well. They're achieving their goals, they're working their skills, and they're getting better. So do not underestimate Karasuno. When they did beat Abba Josai in Season 2, it was such an accomplishment, such an achievement. I love the parallels. The end of Season 1, when they don't beat Abba Josai, Kageyama is on the floor, and he's looking up at Oikawa and he Oikawa is looking down at him being like we are the best don't mess with Abu Josai and then in season two when they beat Abu Josai Kageyama is looking down at Oikawa who's on the floor looking up at Kageyama and Kageyama is basically telling him through his eyes don't mess with Karasuno because we are the crows we will come out strong that's I also love that we get to see little like arcs for all the other teams when they're going up against Karasuno because it shows that these other teams have something that's worth fighting. Season 2 ends when they're about to go up against Ushiwaka, and that's where it ends, and I was like, are you kidding me? You need to watch season 3 now because they're gonna go up against them, and I didn't know what happened. So those are my thoughts on seasons 1 and 2 of Haiku. I'm so excited to jump into season 3, and uh, get to season 4 whenever it's finished, because I want to binge watch it all in one go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, and me fangirling and freaking out for like, a long time but you know but thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the video very soon bye guys